Ohayo gozaimasu! I am the Countess, and welcome to Ruthless Reviews. Today's vic- I mean subject is the visual novel Foul Play by Bandit Visual Games. Now before we move on, disclosure, disclosure, I did help support the game when they were on Kickstarter. But with that said, nothing gets a free pass here. For those who have not seen my reviews before, which are all of you at this point, I go over what I consider to be the positives, the negatives, and the neutral aspects. I then give them a score between negative and infinity to infinity plus one on a sliding scale depending on how I feel, the figs of the moon, and a roll of 46 dropping the lowest. With that said, ikimashou! Overview. Foul Play is a visual novel by Bandit Visual Games, released in October of 2021. I know, I have to follow games that are just brand spanking new. The game describes itself as the story of a young, bright-eyed detective who is determined to succeed. Her world quickly turns upside down after she's tasked with catching a sexy, mercurial assassin. In the end, she needs to determine how pure her conscience really is. With this brief description out of the way, it's time to take a deeper look into the game. Positives The first major positive that really makes this game is that it is a Yuri, or a woman-loving woman story. The story follows the main character, who represents you. That is, if you're an investigator who is relatively new to their job and has had not much real-world experience. Right from the start, they have their world shaken up when they get put on a new case where they run into the two love interests in the story. Each of them have their own fleshed-out personality and characteristics that clash at times. Another major point is the story is about a character coming to terms with their own sexuality. This is presented extremely well, and is a subject that is often not handled with much grace. It goes into how the character reacts to their own personal feelings, and how they ask others questions about how they reacted and their experiences, and also how the main character deals with telling their family. Touching on relationships, there are two romance options. Both of them are really well written. Each has their own perspective of the world, and how they see the main character in it. Both of them want to help the main character become a better person, but each of them has their own way of looking at that. One of the choices is Winter, who turns out to be the assassin the main character was originally hunting down. The other is Cynthia, the character's boss. You know what they say about workplace relationships. Use post-it notes to subtly hint about hooking up in the copy room. In terms of gameplay, a few things stuck out to me. The first, there is an option that a user can have that shows if a choice will have an effect on the plot or the characters in the game. This could be turned off if desired, but I do like that there is this option. It can be helpful for people who might just want to play the game for the plot, or are not used to how visual novels go. Another aspect of gameplay is there are at times where you have to search for clues in a crime scene. Now, this is easy enough, but it's still something different than just selecting from one of three options presented. It does help give the game that detective vibe that it goes for. Lastly, there are some heavy scenes that not all players will feel comfortable seeing or are able to handle. And this is done with an extremely good option in my book. They allow the player to skip them. They notify the player that there is a tough decision coming and are given the option to continue watching or to skip it. I always appreciate when the decision is left to the player and not taken away from them because the player is the one who knows best on whether or not they might be able to handle said situation. Finally, the last thing is humor. I found myself laughing out loud multiple times while playing it. It helps that it plays off of the different lesbian LGBT tropes that 
just hit home a few too many times. I swear the developers must have read my text messages to a friend regarding dental hygiene, and I still crack up about it. Another joke that I already used in this show is about meeting up in the copy room. And just overall how the character is naive at times to a fault. The best is when they respond to a text message asking their boss what they are wearing while they're trying to figure out what to put on for a stakeout. Negatives. Now, I am totally going to own up to these being very nitpicky for reasons, but I do consider them negatives all the same. The first is going to sound odd, but the main character's boss pulling out a gun on a creeper guy very early in the game. Which, yes, is funny, but I think there could have been a better way to show that she's a hothead and reacts with extreme prejudice. Again, I know, it's a weird negative, but just each time I see that scene, it just kind of bothers me. Ugh. The other major negative for me personally comes from my background of being mildly into, well, let's just say I don't wield a crop just for the show. With that being said, a key thing in real life that I see as red flags come up in one of the sex scenes. In it, the main character is handcuffed with no safe word or negotiation regarding what is going to happen. Yes, she is new to all of this, but her partner should be able to guide her better as this is her first experience. I get maybe spending a few minutes explaining kink and consent might have bogged the plot down, but still with all the positive ways the relationships are shown, this really is an unfortunate black mark in the game. Neutral. On to the neutral part of this. Before going through though, just for clarification on what I consider neutral are things that I find interesting, but do not necessarily fall into a positive or negative light. First, I want to highlight the engine used of Renplay. For those not in the know about gaming, Renplay is a visual novel engine that is free to use. Some of my favorite visual novels use this engine, along with some of my least favorite. It really comes down to how it is used, but there are limits to what Rimplay can create. I do dislike when people automatically trash a game for using it, just like I consider any book not handwritten by monks on vellum paper complete garbage and a waste of my time. Get away from me with that printing press, you heathens! Another thing that is highlighted on the developer's website is the team that created it are an LGBT lesbian couple that use their own personal experiences to create a realistic romance that does not feel like other Yuri slash WLW games that are created mostly by cis men for cis men. Though I do wonder if making games is just deep cover for their covert assassination team. With all of that said, I give Foul Play by Bandit Visual Games four totally obvious clues she's hitting on you, and you fail to see them, plus a Subaru out of five. I will put the links to the game in the description below if you are interested in purchasing it. And now we come to everyone's favorite parts of any YouTube video, selling out. The end where you're told to subscribe and like the video and hit the bell and check out their social media. I'm not going to do that though. I refuse to fall into the trap of, oh, I kind of did, didn't I? Join my Patreon though, and together we can beat the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, sayonara.